Anyway, help, I've walked by it. <laughs> right, that's because I'm gassy and it's over there. Well, I'll, go, I'll go back this way. <laughs> Hey up and how you diddling? My name is Steve and once again it's a big warm welcome from myself to Let's Explore. Hope you're doing well and thanks a lot for tuning in and watching me gallivant here, there and everywhere, all over the Ocket, all over Leicestershire and beyond. Right then, so today, for today's video, I've got some unfinished business down at Grace Dew Wood and Cademan Wood. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get you over to the maps to show you exactly what we're doing. Alrighty then, so as per usual, courtesy of Google Earth, I can show you today where I've been sticking my beak in as per usual. And as you can see, we are indeed having a noser within that red flashing circle there between Ashby de la Zouche, Loughborough and Colville. And of course, we are at Grace Dew and Cademan Woods. Good, ain't it? Alrighty then, so first things first, what we need to do is we need to get his beaks in order and go and seek, go and find what remains of the former boathouse down in Grace Dew Wood. Now, I never knew this boathouse existed. Uh, I'd been walking by it for years and playing near it for years. When I was a kid, we used to go down there on his bikes. Um, but it wasn't until uh, a young lad known as uh, Billy Newton, hello Billy if you're watching, uh, he told me about it and then Delighted Dave actually took me to it a few months back. And this of course is near what remains of the Priory. Uh, I didn't go and visit the Priory today. We've been there before in videos. And uh, of course it's a very short distance away from uh, Grace Dew Manor. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get his beaks in gear and actually go and look for it. Come on, let's have a nosey. Right then, so just through there, as you can see, it's hard to make it out of all these trees. There is a bit of a, a depression there. That is, of course, the old lake. No water in it anymore. I think there is around that side. We'll have a look in a minute. But this is what we've come to look at down here. Now, just here, there would have been steps once down to what is left of the boathouse. So let's take you down here. I love this type of exploring. This is my favourite exploring, without a doubt. And here we are, this is where it starts. It's really grey today, the light's not great in here. Right, all this lovely old stonework here that is part of the boathouse. Fantastic that, isn't it? I don't know how old this boathouse is. I'm gonna say that it's older than 200 years. It might even be the best part of 300 years old. I don't know, maybe my old mate Tom Clayton could tell me. He's good with the history and what have you round here. Just look at this here, how this tree is growing out of here. Now that's a substantial size, that tree. Now you'd imagine that's a good couple of hundred years old, wouldn't you? I'm not sure what, uh, what tree that is actually, but uh, you'd imagine that's very old. I mean, look at the roots here. So yeah, this is a very old structure, what remains of it anyway. But ain't that fascinating, don't you think? You know, I, I used to come down here on my bike as a kid, you know, and walk Nev down here, and I never knew that this existed until the last year. But yeah, just look at that, the old boathouse. Fantastic. Really old stone as well. You know, Charmwood Forest stone, I'd wager. But yeah, brilliant. So you can just imagine those with the money, can't you, walking down here for a beautiful sunny afternoons boating on their own lake. Fantastic. And now we're here, many, many, many moons later, donkeys years later. And now it's in this state and many people probably don't even know about it. Well, hopefully you will now anyway. Now I've come down here sticking me oar in, eh? Right, so just through there, you can just about make out the stone there. That, of course, is the old boathouse. And now you can see it really clear, this lake, can't you? Just look at that. Now, when I was a kid, we used to come biking down here from Shepshed. You can see nothing's changed. Mountain biking trails here that are, you know, shared by everyone, dog walkers and runners and explorers like myself. But yeah, this was quite a deep boating lake at one stage. Quite, you know, steep banks there. But yeah, no water in it anymore, of course. 
I think there is just round right there. Here. So just there, you've got what remains of the Charmer Forest Railway, massive embankment there. I think the lake used to carry on through there and then they built this great big railway on top of it. And just down here, I used to think this was a quarry up until not so long back. Do you know what, they might have quarried it, I don't know. Here's the rest of the lake on the same side of the railway as the boathouse. It's all green now, it's probably like a swamp monster or something in there, do you know what I mean? So yeah, fascinating stuff. You won't go for a swim in there now, would you? Right then, so now I've showed you what remains of the boathouse down at Grace Dune Manor, near the, uh, the Priory, of course. I'll take you to show you, without falling over, <laughs> I'll take you to show you the 20 steps. Now, we've been to the 20 steps before, of course, but back then, I didn't know what they were. I didn't know we'd put them there. So, let's go for a recap, eh? then so courtesy of the National Library of Scotland what you're looking at now is an Ordnance Survey map dated 1885 and as you can see you can see where it says the 20 steps that is our next port of call but uh, to the north of that it says Calvary Rock now my good old mate Tom Clayton hello mate if you're watching he told me all about Calvary Rock that there's uh, still a foundation left there but I forgot all about it sorry Tom sorry everyone I'm a bit daft and I you know how it is with me uh, and I actually had to walk past uh, what remains on this rock to actually get to the 20 steps but like I say I forgot all about it now we have been to the 20 steps before very early on in my video making journey but I didn't know what they were back then I ain't got scooby doo anyway without uh, any further ado let me quit my jibber jabber and slobber as per usual let's go and have a look at them right see you in a minute right then so here we are finally the famous 20 steps and you know these steps form part of a procession route from Grace Dune Manor all the way up to the monastery which is a couple of miles from here and I first came here when I was about 15 years old found it by accident was on his bikes and you know all sorts of rumors of you know what this might have once been myths and legends but uh, turns out I think it was put in these steps were put in in the uh, the mid 19th century I think and like I say it was basically a, a bit of a trail part of a trail from Grace Dune Manor up to the monastery and of course not far up there is the chapel as well in Caveman Wood which I'll be showing you next. Let's have a look at this first. Tell you what these steps really are fascinating you know i bet there's been some really important feet walk along those in the time and uh you know of course the rocks weren't put there <laughs> i mean they've been put there by nature of course you know man hasn't put those there i'd be amazed if they did no they ain't nature's put those there and you know some of these rocks up here in charmwood forest according to form some of the oldest on the earth i mean i don't know i mean i don't know if they've seen the birth records or something like that do you know what i'm saying birth certification and all that yeah, I mean, just look at some of these these rocky outcrops up here. I mean, they're incredible. You know, even at the back of the 20 steps, you know, they're immense. Amazing. But yeah, that is the 20 steps. Now, I'm going to trust whoever called them the 20 steps that there is actually 20 steps there. Or was. I haven't counted them. Right. Let's go and show you what remains of the chapel. Alrighty then, so here of course is the chapel which we're going to look at next on Temple Hill at the side of Loughborough Road there as you can see in Caveman Wood. And I walked by this chapel for years, well what's left of it anyway, there's just a foundation of it now as you're going to see shortly. But uh, this was actually taken down piece by piece apparently in the 1960s according to my mate Tom because they had you know problems with vandalism uh, back then with it. And uh, it actually resides now of course um, up at Mount St Bernard's Abbey on the walk you can go on at the back. And uh, just about now at some point, you're going to see the little chapel. Just watch this. 
And there you have it. Now I have been to this before, but you know, the times that I've been to it, I didn't actually know that it used to be in Caveman Wood. But it's a pretty little thing, isn't it? Built out of beautiful stone, as you can see there. Um, but yeah, they had problems with it in the 60s and had to, you know, they decided to move it up to the monastery. But uh, I'm glad they did. It's a pretty little thing, isn't it? Anyway, let's get on with the exploration. Going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. Right then, so we've found the chapel of Dolores. I think that's how you pronounce it, Dolores. Now, I think this chapel is mid 19th century. I think I'm right, and I, Tom? Oh, I'm a good lad if I'm correct. It's old anyway. Now, last time I come up here, it wasn't so overgrown because it was winter when I actually come and found this. So when you walk on this path here, just over my right shoulder, you might think that this here is no more than a little dry stone wall, but it's actually the, the foundations. Now, apparently, from what Tom's told me, this chapel was taken down in the 1960s and moved to uh, Mount St. Bernard's Abbey because it, it started getting vandalised. So I'll try and show you what I can of it. It's quite difficult because it's really overgrown. In fact, I'm glad I've put my jeans on today. I've normally got my bloody shorts on because I'm a wally, and I? <laughs> right, let's show you around it as best I can. Right, so as you can see, it's very difficult to really show you this properly, the actual outline of it, because it's very overgrown down here. But you know, when you do look at this, it does indeed look like a dry stone wall. And to be fair, it is made out of the same material, isn't it? Definitely a good idea to put my jeans on today. So yeah, it goes round the back of here. I've lost it now, where is it? Yeah, there it is there. Now, it's not a very big chapel at all this wasn't, it was quite small. It wasn't anything large and spectacular, I don't think. Um, I've got to get round here. I should have done this in the colder months to be fair. But yeah, you're gonna struggle seeing it, but. Yeah, so here is, here's part of it as well. So yeah, you know, I mean, I used to walk by here a lot and didn't even know this was here. And I'm actually standing in it right now. So yeah, interesting that. It's a shame we can't see it more, but never mind. All right then, so now we've located and looked at what remains of the chapel in Cademan Wood, what we now need to do is walk a short distance to see if we can find what remains of the monument. Now this monument was quite imposing when it actually stood high up on the, the rocky outcrop in Cademan Wood. Uh, but of course it came down in the 1920s because of a bad storm. But it was, uh, as you'll see on the photograph, it was quite a, an imposing uh, structure, as you'll see shortly from the picture. And there you have it, the Cademan Wood Monument, or Tower, and uh, absolutely amazing piece of architecture, isn't it? It's a shame it ain't there, but like I say, it got struck down in a storm in the 1920s. And I've got to thank Tom once again for sending me these photographs a while back. I really like this one as well. Can you just make out that chap there stood near the door? It looks quite dapper, don't he? And uh, he certainly ain't got his uh, tracky bottoms on, not back in those days anyway, but yeah, love those pics. Right then, so why did they actually build this tower in the first place in Caveman Wood? Well, as you can see before you're here, what you're looking at is a photograph of uh, Everard Lyle Phillips. Now in the video, I think I refer to him as Everard de Lyle, but it's actually Everard Lyle Phillips. Now, Everard was actually killed over in India in the mutiny of Delhi in 1857. And uh, so what they did, the family decided around about 10 years after his death, so in the 1860s, that they actually built this monument high up where they did. And apparently they could actually see it from Grace Dew Manor at the time where they used to live. Of course, Grace Dew Manor actually becoming uh, the school, which I think is either still for sale or sold recently. Right then, so who's this geezer we're looking at? Now I can hear you asking. Right, so in the video, I think I say that Augustus Pugin, who this guy is who you're looking at now, designed the monument. Now, it wasn't him, it was his son, Edward, who uh, of course became an architect. But uh, the old man that you're looking at now, Augustus Pugin, was a, a neo-Gothic architect, very famous back in the day. Uh, he actually designed the clock tower, uh, which houses Big Ben on the Houses of Parliament, as well as, uh, I think he actually designed the interior of the Houses of Parliament. I'm not so sure about the actual main building itself, uh, but he was a very famous architect, this guy was. Now, um, 
Augustus, who you're looking at now, I'll tell you a little story about him. So if you know Shepshed quite well in Leicestershire, there's a, a street in Shepshed known as Pick Street. Now there's an old church on Pick Street that's now a private house. And it was him, Augustus Pugin, that designed that church, believe it or not. And uh, I actually know this because the, the guy who owns the shop near me, Melvin, where I get me Melvin Cobbs from, he loves a bit of history and he's from Shepshed originally. And he was telling me about this last year, I think it was. And uh, it's quite interesting to note that uh, although he designed that little church on Pick Street, Augustus Pugin, he never accepted a fee for it. He wouldn't take a fee. So yeah, that was good of him, weren't it? But yeah, he didn't design... Um, the actual monument in Caveman Wood, um, it was his son, Edward, we think. So uh, if you hear me say that in the video, I'm wrong. Anyway, I can't be perfect. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. So yeah, the tower, I think it's to the right. Ah, right. Here's evidence. Right, all these rocks here, I'm pretty sure these are all part of what's left of the tower. Like I say, it was struck by lightning, I think in a storm in the 1920s. If you ever come up here, just watch your footing, because it's, you know, a lot of this is loose, but yeah. See all this here, look, all this stone? This is all part of it. I'm sure it is. Yeah, it is, definitely. There's the odd brick as well. So yeah, just there, look. Red engineering brick, that would have been part of it. So yeah, it's interesting. For sure. Here you are, look, here's a foundation here. Ain't that good? I'll also show you a picture of this uh, tower shortly that Tom sent me a while back. Just look at that. Fantastic. Stunning. So they'd have had to have got all these materials up here. Um, they're painting the backside to do it now. And we've got good road links and technology to move stuff now, haven't we? But it would have been awkward in around about what we the 1860s, 10 years after the death of Everard Delisle. So, so yeah, this is the tower. So where I'm standing now, I'm actually inside it, believe it or not. So I'm thinking then, I mean, it was quite a high tower as you'll see on the actual photograph. You've got all these trees here. So to see it from Grace Dew Manor, about a mile away in that direction, a mile and a half away, either all these weren't as high as they are now, or this was, a lot taller than I give it credit for but yeah fascinating so yeah this is all part of the old tower brilliant so yeah nice red brick here from the 1860s it was part of the tower really heavy these bricks are you could do a good work out of them couldn't you just over here last time I come up here I found this so if you're ever up here and you come across some red engineering bricks in Cable and Wood, you most likely are at the tower site. We sat just up there. All these rocks here, we're all part of it. And then you've got this, look. I wonder if this is part of an old chimney stack or something that we're in there. I don't know, I'd have to look at the photo again. I'm not sure if it had a chimney or not. But yeah. So yeah, these were part of the famous monument stroke tower in Cable and Wood. Alrighty then, well unfortunately that concludes today's video and I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been nice getting out up here and you know I don't need an excuse to come up to Cademan Wood or Grace Dew Wood to be honest with you. It's a, it's a beautiful local beauty spot this. Really lucky to have it on my doorstep virtually to be honest with you. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little video about the little secrets of Grace Dew Wood and Cademan Wood, please like, subscribe and share the video. And I'll be seeing you, you can bet your last imaginary Rolo on that, an imaginary quid. <laughs> I'll be seeing you very soon at the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.